Welcome to Masterclass for Directing. I'm James Velasquez. Today I'll be speaking to Maria Eriksson Hecht. We'll be asking about directing styles and what it means to be a director. How do you prepare for a film and uh, what's your process for breaking down the essential story uh, that you want to tell? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have quite an, uh, my, my, uh, an advanced uh, method for it, <laughs> sort of. Um, but you mean from the, right from the start, sort of? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, first, of course, I look, what's, uh, I look both at what's the... What's the um, um, uh, what's what's the meaning of the story as a whole? And this is both if I uh, work work with the script that I've written on my own, or if I work with a script that that has been written from a scriptwriter. So I look at the um, at the whole of the script. What is it is it about? Uh, what's my personal connection for it emotionally? Um, and yeah, I make a, a, a very thoroughly script analysis first and analyze uh, the character and go very deep into it. And uh, uh, I just made short films so far, but yeah, for a short film it takes like two, three days just to, just to make my script analysis. Yeah, yeah and then I, I work very thoroughly with rehearsals, rehearsals as well. Um, so I prepare uh, the actors. Uh, yeah, it's a real. Yeah, it's a very. <laughs> it's a quite. Uh, it takes. Uh, it takes a lot of time, uh, and preparation. How much time would you say is needed, uh, or do you do you like to spend on preparing for, before you shoot for a film? Um, I made myself a promise uh, when I did my graduation films uh, at at the, at the, from the bachelor uh, in film directing. Mm -hmm. Um, because then uh, yeah, I promised myself to never go into uh, production with an unfinished script. So, uh, because I did that then. Um, so, I usually try to be, um, have a finished script quite early. And I start, for a short film, I would start uh, casting like half a year before, something like that. And then I would try to start with rehearsals like maybe two months before, and I try to have them a bit spread out. So you have time in between to think and yeah, not to have it too, everything too close to the shooting. So I spread it out, like maybe I meet the actors four or five times before. Um, yeah, and then of course it's the preparation with the DOP. Now I'm just talking about the, mm. with the actors, um, yeah. So a couple of months before. Yeah. Uh, and that leads me to the next question is working with actors. Um, how does a director get the best performance out of an actor? To prepare them yeah. <laughs> very well, I would say. Um, and yeah. to, be, to be very open to uh, do mis make mistakes and not uh, to, have, yeah, to have the feeling that you can do all the mistakes you want because then probably they will be um, uh, I'd say they dare to throw the se themselves out. Yeah. How important is trust between an actor and a director? I think it's everything, <laughs> because if you really have a trust in each other, you you will have an actor that gives you everything they have uh, and even more. So it's uh, essential. Yeah. How do you how how do you as a director build that trust with an actor? With preparation. Uh, firstly, I would say you build it by really knowing your script and why you want to do, do that film. Uh, because it will shine through if you are doing something that you really want to do and that really has a connection 
to you. You don't. It doesn't have to be that you have written the script on your own. I mean, emotional connection uh, that you have really found that in the script. So it starts there, I would say, and then by meeting and talking and uh, try things out in rehearsals. I would say. Yeah. Can you describe a little bit of that uh, building that trust process for you? Um, if you take uh, school starts sorry, for example. Yeah. Uh, or schoolyard blues mm. in English. Uh, there was the central character is a, a young boy. Mm. How do you build trust with a young boy? Yeah, uh, that's going to and and get a perform a believable performance out of it. Yeah, I would say time, mm. um, which is what you usually don't have. But it's uh, it's always important, and it's even more important when you work with children. I would say. Uh, and there I worked with um, a seven-year-old and eleven-year-old boy. Uh, so we met before a couple of times. I met both with the smallest boy on my, on my own, together with Pelle, who wrote, wrote the script and also was my assistant. Um, so we met and we filmed and we did uh, play, uh, like uh, played, like baking. Uh, we, we did some baking or just. Um, yeah, also the things with the costumes, <laughs> to, to try out the costumes for the character. That's also when you meet and everything, all of those things when you meet and talk and try things out is a way of building trust. And also with kids, of course, it, you have to have a relationship with the parents, so you have to build a trust with the parents as well. So that's also part of it. Mm. Uh, and then we can go directly, what was the casting process like? And what should one, as a director, think about when casting children or, and then we can go to casting in general, but we start with... Yeah, uh, the, the casting process was, uh, I worked with a, a casting director um, called Sara Clara Hellström. She was the one who found these two boys. Um, one of them, have, the older boy, had filmed a bit before, so she found him through, like, uh, um, archives um, and the smallest boy she found at the school where she was, uh, yeah, she was at schools uh, looking for uh, a kid that would suit this part. Um, so she found them and then she presented them to, to me and that's where I come into the process and, and try them out. And I tried them out two or three times on my own as well. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, what, what you're looking for in the casting process with kids. I would say first, do they want to be in the film? It's very difficult when a kid doesn't want to. Um, and it's very hard to really know because they can, maybe they think it's really fun when they start and they after a while don't think it's fun. So uh, it's good to try them out a couple of times so you see if they think it's fun or not. And uh, so it's not just their parents that want to be them to be a part of it. Uh, so that's the first. And then it's important to know what kind of emotional um, um, emotional uh, emotions they have to be able to go to. Um, like do they have to be able to be really angry or do they have to be able to be sad or playful or yeah. Uh, so that's and that you have to try out at casting so that you know if they are able to go to those places or not because if they are not able to do it in casting they will not be able to do it on the set with people looking um, and then yeah you have to see okay what 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 kind of um, what kind of uh, qualities. qualities exactly what yeah. kind of qualities does this character need is it uh, someone who's very tough or is it uh, someone that's very shy or not because casting kids is very much about casting someone who is quite close to the character in their qualities how they shine through so that's also one thing I would say and try out how uh, I would also recommend to try how they uh, how, how they can learn lines if they are able to learn lines and not so you don't just do impro improvs in casting because that can... Some kids are really good at improvs and not so good at learning lines, so they have to be able to do both, I think. Yeah. So they read, you present a, a script and then yeah. do both, yeah, and script and improvising. Yeah, and I would say do give them the script uh, uh, on the spot and not uh, beforehand <laughs> because they, 
and they will probably maybe do line, a line reading where they really have decided how to say the lines and that's, that's usually very hard to change. <laughs> yeah. And then if we take um, the difference between casting for children and for adults, is there a difference or do you approach it differently or do you, uh, is it sort of the same process? No, I would say it's very different. Uh, of, of course there are similarities <laughs> that you have to know if they are um, they are um, um, they suit the part uh, like they have the qualities that this specific part needs and are they able to go to these emotions that's needed that's the same but when casting children you have to it's about quantity as well you have to meet a lot of kids <laughs> uh, to find the right one um, and you don't have if you when you have found the right one you don't usually have two or three other options <laughs> you just have that one but when it comes to grown like professional actors grown ups you can go to a uh, agency or like looking at theaters uh, home pages to see to to remind yourself okay which actors are here or not so it's very different in that way um, and I have also casted grown-ups that I've not made a, like a normal casting with just uh, because I had met them and talked about the script so it can be like that as well if I have seen already what they have done um, so yeah, it's, but I would, would prefer to do a casting to see can we work together and also like if I work with a, a professional actor together with a kid, I do the casting mostly to, to see if they work together. It, uh, can this actor fit with this kid? Yeah. Uh, so for you, casting is, uh, would you say it's the most important part of filmmaking for you? Not, not uh, no, one of the most important parts for directing. I yeah. would say it's a very, like if you have cast it wrong or in, you've cast it someone who's not able to go to those places, you can throw the film in the can. It's, uh, you have to recast or, yeah, it's like 80% of the directing almost, I would say, to have the right person in front of the camera. Yeah. Uh, how important are the DOP and production designers to a director and what is your working process with them? As important as the uh, actors, <laughs> I would say. Um, yeah, and how is the process? I, I, since I've just made films that are sort of not... Yeah, it's, they are financed, but they are not... not uh, they don't have the budget that, that, that they should have had. Uh, to be able to be made in those the way that I want, I, I usually try to to work um, quite early with them to start the dialogue because usually they have to have other projects running parallel with my project. So maybe I just have two weeks really intense pre-production with them, but I don't want us to start on the creative dialogue two weeks before shooting. So I try to, like with the last f film I did, a uh, short film I shot this summer, uh, I, I think I started to work with the DP half a year before <laughs> uh, to find pictures and look at references and yeah, uh, find a common long language together. Um, so I, I start early and we just sit and talk and look at pictures and films and uh, and and the production designer uh, this time corona came uh, so we had to postpone everything and we had to replace our production designer to another person but uh, um, before that we had a very yeah like a couple of months where we met like every second week one day and then two weeks later another day so, yeah. And that, that process with the director creating the, uh, and production designer um, creating that visual style that you're, that you're looking for in the film, does that, does that, do you already have that in mind or is it something that comes along in conversations with them? I have something in my mind that I've, I thought about and because uh, quite early in the financing process I have to work, find my vision for the film. So I... I I, f I, I find pictures and, uh, and the style that I ha have in mind that I, I work 
um, like I have my document and my maps with all the pictures and, and stuff that I, and thoughts. Um, so I have a quite clear idea, but then a lot of a lot happens when I start to work with the DFPs. So then we merge our ideas. I, I try not to put all my ideas on the DLP uh, immediately. I want them to read first and hear their thoughts and what they have in mind. So, mm. Can we go back a, a little bit to uh, School Start Story? Um, how, did you, how were you able to adapt a fast-paced working environment like a film set to a place where a child actor can feel safe and deliver such a great performance? I was helped with a very good uh, first AD. <laughs> um, hmm. And the DOP, it's, I, I don't know. I think I try to be very focused and <laughs> shut. Like, my, my, my dialogue is with my actors. My DOP and the first AD, I would say, on the set. It's, so it's I, I try not to take all the stress uh, go into the work. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have a... I, I think I try just to be very focused and concentrated. I think it will... I try to um, make that shine through. And it, also I had a lot of help from Pella because he was very focused on the small kid uh, because it's too much you can't like take care of the kids between the takes the whole time you have mm. to you have to have help with that um so i had a lot of help with that from him yeah the writing process and working with writers mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes you write yourself of course but uh <clears throat> is there a difference between how do you how do you work with uh, with a script that you've that's been written for you or by other writers, and what is the difference between your own work and, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, the, how, how I, um, like how I um, um, approach my work, if I work with my own script and if I work with a mm. script writer. Um, usually, nowadays I don't write my own scripts that much, but I co-write some. And uh, I do a lot, um, most of my, now I work a lot with my partner, who's a scriptwriter. So we have a very close collaboration. So it's, the film start usually with a common idea from the both of us, and then Pella writes, and I get feedback, um, or give him feedback. Um, and now we are working on a feature film where we co-write. So it's not that, different for me because um, I'm very involved from early on. Um, I'm not directed so much where I've gotten a script that is uh, uh, like fully developed and now okay direct this. I, 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 just done, I just did that at film school but after film school I'm usually very very involved early on um, so it feels almost like I've written it although I didn't. <laughs> Sort of, um, but maybe I'm. It's easier to kill my darlings in dialogue when it's not my own dialogue, mm. which I think is a good thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and we, we talked a little bit about the rehearsal process uh, in in, in uh, how how do you, do you stick usually stick to what's on the page or do you, do you like to use it as a blueprint when you're shooting and how do rehearsals affect that? Um, I usually try not to rehearse too much from the script. Um, we read the script and talk about it, but then I try to rehearse. I think rehearsal is there for building a relationship between me and the actors and the actors, between the actors, uh, building a trust uh, to, to deepen the character and find the character, or like um, get, like, yeah, may, to, to make them find the character and deepen it and, and deepen, the, deepen the, um, um, the connection to the story. And maybe if it's needed to fix things in the script that doesn't work. Uh, so there are different, uh, different things um, that are important. And I, I do different things 
uh, for those parts, sort of. So it could be just meeting and doing bowling together, um, or go out and have a fika and just talk, um, in, and not be in character then, just to build a sort of get to know each other. Uh, both me together with actors, not the actors alone. <laughs> I, I'm there as well. Um, and then I try to do like uh, theater games, uh, like uh, uh, mirror where you follow each other, or uh, like screaming out the line in different ways, or just um, yeah, being a statue in different yeah, uh, like silly theater games, uh, just to. Um, to to like f get get used to working together, and I think it's also a good way to. And sometimes I'm a part of it. <laughs> it's a good way to because I think it's um, you have to be um, not be shy to humiliate yourself to just <laughs> sort of. So I do that, and then I do some improvs maybe, uh, which usually is a backstory in prose and then I do um, uh, specially written scenes that I uh, ask the scriptwriter to do uh, that is also backstory that could be like turning points uh, in the relationship that uh, those things that have happened before the script starts or it could be like uh, things that is happening between the scenes <laughs> in the script. So those things I do uh, together. Yeah. I know in, in the school starts story, there, it's a, there's, there's a very poetic feel in the, in the visual style and the camera's motivation. So I wonder, how do you break down a scene and decide the camera's motivation and how to use it when it comes to the core of the, finding the core of the scene? Yeah. Uh, of course, it's uh, really uh, about the collaboration with the DOP. Um, it's um, when I do my script analysis, I I think about every what my vision is for every scene. Uh, so it's not just about um, um, analyze the characters' motivations and so on. It's also about my vision. What is the scene like in a line? <laughs> is this a this is a scene where they realize they don't love each other anymore, or this is a scene where he decides to stop drinking or whatever um, it could be. And so I really am very important to find why is this scene there? What is the, my vision for it? Uh, like in the feeling of it. Uh, and I try to find a um, title for the, for the scene, like this fee scene should be about shame, or it should be a very claustrophobic, or this is a scene is intimacy is the most important. So if I have a scene that is about love and intimacy, uh, maybe it's very close and poetic. And if this is if it's a scene about um, the last uh, last farewell or distance, <laughs> like yeah, or the last picture in that film. The, that is a, uh, the title of that scene. I would say is what will happen with this boy. And uh, the DOP asked, is he going into a light wood um, forest? Is it a light forest? Is it a, like? Do you think it will go well, or is it? Is he going into darkness? Uh, is he going into? Is it not going to be well for him? So there's no line. There are no lines about it. It's just a picture we, where the boy goes into a very dark forest, and it's, so it's a collaboration. I know the, the, the question about the scene that the DOP asks is: Is it? Is he going into darkness or lightness? So yeah, and it was very dark. So we found it a really dark forest. So yeah, in that way I work. How important is music for you when you're making a film and doing a scene? Do you, do you tend to use music? Uh, this is a tricky question because I never have had the budget enough to work, work with music as I would like. But I've found a composer that I really love working with. Uh, I would have 
love to have her much more early on in the process, uh, ideally. But uh, for those projects that I've made, uh, it has come quite late in the process. Um, so I have worked with references in the editing. Um, so unfortunately, quite early. Mm. No, quite late. Yeah. Sorry. Do you, do you use music on set as inspiration or no? No. 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 I um, I have a I think I, I have a I have a quite strong feeling on on what kind of music it should be. It's not that it could be anything. <laughs> um, where that is. Uh, much about the tone and it's uh, more about the atmosphere and it's quite close to the visual language on finding the and and it's usually a music that is quite on the border between sound and music <laughs> so um, um, so I just listen to those kind I listen more to film music than 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 like popular music, of course, yeah. Um, do you think that directors have an ethical and moral responsibility to the audience? Hmm. Yes, of course you have, uh, in a way. Um, I can just talk to myself, I don't want to judge <laughs> others, others' work, but um, it's like a, of, you have a you have, you choose where you put the camera and what you show and you what you don't show and what's what's between in the scene and between the scene. Uh, I work for example a lot of young people and uh, when it comes to like if how I, I show or not show a young person's body for example uh, is. Um, is of course, I, I, I make my choices um, in according to what, 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 what I think uh, is responsible to, towards uh, the, the actors and also what I think is important to show and not to show. Uh, but that may, yeah, maybe it's more about my, my yeah, responsibility towards the, the people behind the camera. So I mean, that's yeah. that's uh, the other part of the question is is do do you do you feel a sense of responsibility and moral and ethical responsibility to them as well when you're yeah, making a story that, I mean to these boys for example or to a young girl and yeah, yeah. Uh, I think because, yeah um, I did for example a film about um, grooming which is like pedophilia on the internet internet and there I have. Uh, um, um, it's uh, like a rape in front of the camera, but I. So of course there we have we chose not to show this girl, and we have things that are between the scenes and not in the scenes. I would never want to show her her body. So the the more she takes her clothes off, the closer is the camera, and she she didn't take her clothes off to the team. Of course she had clothes other clothes under her, the clothes that she has. Uh, because I would never, I'm not interested in in showing her. I'm just interested in telling the feelings that she's having, which is in her face. <laughs> so um, that's both towards the audience. I, I don't want to feed them with what the film is actually about uh, or the abuses. Uh, I don't want to feed them with that. I just want them to to know how it feels, and I don't want to hurt the person um, behind the camera. Also since they are not um, grown-ups and it will be on, on out there forever. Uh, so they should not do anything that they probably will uh, regret someday. Yeah. Ah, it's an interesting question, tricky question. That's a, it's a difficult one. I think it's something that um, a lot of people, I mean, Find it interesting also. Yeah, I think it's also uh, the part like how, how do you show violence and why? Um, it's also a question. Um, of course, I think that you are as a filmmaker, 
um, yeah, you should ask yourself is what, how do you, how do you show it and why? Uh, why is it there? Um, because the f the pictures that we do uh, is also um, you you are presenting a reality um, and telling about the reality. Um, and that representation also who is in front of the camera and how are they in front of the camera and that's how people then see at each other so it's uh, I think yeah film is a very powerful storytelling uh, tool and you should um, be um, you should think about how you use it <laughs> I would say yeah and there's also that question of representation now nowadays in, in film and TV I just wonder if that's something that interests you in terms of directing further projects and, and how you would take that mm. on. How I take that on? I, I, I think, like, um, since I'm a storyteller, I, I believe um, I can tell a lot of different stories. I don't think that I should just tell stories about uh, women in the, th my th the 30s, like I am. Uh, so I think that um, I, can, I can tell very different stories, but I have to, if it's not a story that I um, sort of lived my, on my own, I would work in another way. I would work a lot, I work a lot of with research, for example. I talk a lot with people. Uh, I think it's very important how you cast uh, and that you involve the people in front of the camera uh, into the process on discussing the script and so on. So the things that you have not uh, experiences from on your own, you have to find other ways to make them truthful. So you just don't sit and come make everything, uh, all things up in your um, on your own. I think it's important to. Um, I think research is a, is a very important key for me, yeah. Considering how long it takes to get a production off the ground, oftentimes, sometimes years, mm -hmm. uh, where do you find your commitment and creativity to keep pushing to get a project made, a specific project made? Ooh, uh, it, it, of course, it starts with the story. <laughs> What's the story about and why I want to do that story? And also, uh, it's a lot about the uh, collaborations. If I have collaboration with, uh, if I work with uh, people that I really love working with, then I would be able to um, keep my um, uh, keep it the, my creativity burning <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I would say, yeah, yeah, it has to be it has to be a story that I'm really interested in and the, the thematic that it's something that. Um, feels relevant for me um, and often it's about something um, um, yeah it's something political in society and I found find a, um, a character who is can represent this um, this uh, thing so so it has to have some kind of connection in the society and on my own experience in a way Emotional experience. What would you say your driving force is as a director? What is it that drives you the most? My love for film, <laughs> I think. I, I, I think it starts there. Uh, because otherwise I would do, I would, I would tell stories in uh, theater or, or liter literature or something. Uh, and I'm I do mainly film. I don't uh, direct it. So it's it starts with uh, I really love the film uh, experience, um, and uh, and making stories that I, f I think is relevant for me. So it's uh, it, it's both of them, you yeah. know. Um, and one more thing, yeah. I absolutely love working with actors. It's the most fun thing ever. So, uh, and being so working with actors on the set, where you get that feeling, where something, uh, mag when magic occurs, it's really just a feeling that you get when you are totally there in the moment, and something very special happens 
happens that just happens there, and you are sort of the magician who just talked a little bit pe different people, and then poof, <laughs> and that's really a very special feeling. Yeah. Uh, can you give us some of your influences? Or Hmm, yeah, uh, Bo Wiedeberg, I love him. I, I have, yeah, it's mostly film directors, I would say. Like, Bo Wiedeberg is one, uh, one like my husgud, house god, or how you call it. Um, he, it was one of my first, uh, like, um, uh, love, let's <laughs> say. So, so I, um, he, I, I'm very influenced by him, and then there are some a British directors like Andrea Arnold and Kyo Bernard and, uh, and then Jane Campion is also um, like a um, big inspiration. And Lucas Modisson, Joachim Trier, I think he's one of the most the modern masters. Yeah, I have a couple. Yeah. Uh, what would you say the most difficult part of directing is for the most challenging part of directing is? Um, most challenging part of directing, I would say, um, not make your doubts be bigger than your your um, than your uh, believing in yourself. So not and so not uh, yeah to not uh, not make the um, uh, how do you say backslag like the. Um, not make the setbacks take over, <laughs> and to still make it, to still find like, okay, this didn't work. I'm up on the horse again. I don't care about that. You have to make the like, you, you have to make it just the water just go off your body and then move forward. That's it. so. Yeah, the financing process. I would say the setbacks in the financing process. It's it's uh, very challenging to to keep on. Uh, um, wanting to make the film. Yeah. Having a thick skin, really. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it's it's very very challenging because most people making films are quite sensitive, so you have to be super sensitive to be a good director, I think, uh, because your emotions is. Uh, I would say my emotions and my sensibility is my. Um, my biggest, uh, uh, it's what I, it's what's uh, like my, my force. <laughs> it's what makes me a good director, but it's also what makes me very vulnerable. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and one piece of advice for aspiring directors. Uh, you should ask yourself if you really want to do this. <laughs> If you have to do this, and if you don't have to do it, you should do something else. <laughs> because uh, you really have to... Um, because I do it because I, there's nothing else that I feel that I could do and still be a happy person. Uh, but if it would be, I would choose that, because it is very challenging and it is very hard and it takes a lot of... Uh, uh, it uh, takes a lot of my... Um, yeah, you have to be thick skin. <laughs> sort of. um, so I would say, ask yourself that, and if the answer is yes, I have to do this, then you should not give up. <laughs> you should just uh, make films. And if you want to make your own films, uh, keep on doing that, even though you are working on other people's projects. Um, because I've always made my own projects, even though, even if I had money or not. Uh, so you can always find people that are on the same level as you, work with them, find your, the people that want to make films, uh, and do your own things, even though you are um, maybe a production assistant at a f big feature film, <laughs> so that you keep on developing your own stories and your own visual language and your, your, your tools and working with actors and so on. Yeah. Last question, um, do you have a dream project or something that you, you were just would love? <laughs> you, you really love yeah, so I yeah. I have, a, I have a feature film project that I've uh, developed for I think three years now. Um, that I, I think it can be fantastic if it's made, so that's my dream project. Um, and it's also, 
where I have, I found my crew and I would really love to do that film together with them.